Good morning, everybody. Uh, as you can see, we're outside St. Andrews this morning, and uh, it's the day before Palm Sunday, so I thought uh, it'd be good to read this passage from Palm Sunday. Um, and it's from Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Beth Bethany, at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you'll find a colt there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, tell him the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead and found it, just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. It's a very dramatic story. And uh, Jesus is now making things very clear. Everything about this story is telling us very clearly that he is the king that has come. And uh, whereas before in the Gospels he's always... Uh, being slightly oblique um, and uh, he, he's sort of talked in riddles. Now he's very, very clear. It's very clear. Everything he, he did, riding on the colt was a, fulfilling a prophecy of Zechariah, um, the uh, spreading of the branches, uh, the waving of the palm leaves, the cloaks on the ground, the um, even what they said, quoting from Psalm 118, it was all prophetic. Uh, saying that the king has come and uh, what uh, is extraordinary about this is that uh, Jesus now making it so clear uh, is being very provocative he's being very confrontational uh, it'd be almost as confrontational as setting up a hamburger school in the middle of Mecca during Ramadan I mean you couldn't get much more provocative than this but what I find interesting, and I hadn't actually noticed this until uh, this morning actually, is that the crowd that was there shouting and praising God and saying Hosanna in the highest is not the same crowd that said crucify him on Good Friday. I had always thought and always and actually taught and, and believed that we talked about the fickle crowd, the crowd one minute said Hosanna and then the next minute cried crucify him. But actually, they were two different crowds. If you look at the, the accounts carefully in Mark, Matthew, and, uh, and Luke, you'll notice that the crowd that said Hosanna came from Bethany and Bethphage, where he got the cult from. In other words, the crowd that followed him uh, already knew him. They'd have seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. They already knew who he was. They, knew th they, they, they proclaimed that he was the king, the savior of the world. Whereas the crowd that said crucify him were from Jerusalem, stirred up by the Pharisees, a very different crowd. And I think that, uh, that really epitomizes the, 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 the two uh, approaches to Jesus on this day. You either crown him as your king or you kill him as a criminal. And actually there's no, there's no middle ground. You can't be neutral. He's either your king or else you want to get rid of him completely. You want to kill him. Uh, and that's an extraordinary thought that, that, you know, even as Christians, we cannot be neutral. We can't sort of just uh, uh, treat him as if he's just our, our, good, uh, our good friend, our good counselor. He's our king. He's our king. And uh, we need to submit to him. It's rather like what I'm going to say tomorrow about the... Uh, the church in Laodicea, Jesus said to him, I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you're neither, because you're lukewarm, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. It's a very dramatic, a very violent reaction. 
and uh, and it's the same thing. You know, uh, it, you can't be lukewarm about Jesus. You can't just sort of uh, you can't sort of use him as a hobby or use him as as just a convenient crutch. He's either your king or we need to get rid of him completely. And and obviously that is the decision uh, for Palm for Palm uh, Sunday. And uh, and I leave that with you today. Um, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. But as we close, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came, that you came as our Saviour, you came gentle, riding on a donkey, not on a war horse. That you came to be our Saviour, to be our Lord, to be our King. And today, Lord God, we submit to you as the King of our lives, the King of our hearts. And may we submit to you in everything and put you as the Lord and Saviour of our lives, of our church, of our village, of our nation, of our world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a good day.